When you've left home and you traveled far, it's time for a visit to the Common Beat Bar. Hello everybody and welcome back to the next installment of the Common Beat Bar. August 26th of 2000 was the day that we premiered our show of a Common Beat at Tankio Laredo Heights University in Denver. Tekio Laredo Heights has a long history going back to 1886. It was founded as a Catholic college, but by the time that we got there, it had been bought by a Japanese college and had become Tekio Laredo Heights, an international college. And so in honor of that heritage and our history there on that day, we're going to be making a sake sangria today. So we've got pretty simple ingredients today, nothing out of the realm. We're going to start with a vodka. So I've got three olives vodka, but you can use any plain vodka that you choose. I've chosen Geiki Kan Sake, so it's a traditional Junmai Sake. Uh, it is American grown. You can get it from anywhere you want as long as it's a plain, unflavored sake. And then it's clear. Don't use a milky sake for this. I've got simple syrup here. You can make your own simple syrup at home. No need to buy it. One part water to one part sugar. Boil and cool it, and that gives you your simple syrup. Fresh squeezed lemon juice. Don't buy anything from a bottle. Do it yourself. And then this is going to be Prosecco. So, I prepared a wine glass right there with ice. We're going to take our mixing glass here. Now, as we do everything in the Common Beat Bar series, we're going to be doing it as a double, because that's how we drink it up with people. So the recipe here is one ounce of vodka, but we're going to be doing two. And we're just going to put this vodka here into our mixing glass, because we want to be able to combine our ingredients better before we get them into the wine glass. So, recipe one ounce. Nathan's poured two ounces of vodka. We're going to do the same with our sake. So we're looking for two ounces of the Geiki Khan here. And then we're going to take our simple syrup. Really simple proportions here because it's also going to be two ounces. So we've got one ounce of vodka, one ounce of sake, one ounce of simple syrup. And then the recipe calls for a half an ounce of lemon juice, fresh squeezed. So I'm going to do one ounce here. And there we go. That's our main part of this cocktail. We're going to take it and we're going to roll it back and forth into our cocktail shaker. We want to combine those ingredients thoroughly without adding any air to the drink. We don't want to change its texture. So we're just going to roll back and forth three times, ending in our mixing tin. Take your wine glass at an angle so we can get everything right down in there. Perfect. And now we're going to open up our bottle of Prosecco. There should be a tab right here on it, sure enough. And then we're going to get the armature off, so you're going to have to find your wire right there. Just like champagne or any other sparkling wine, it should have a tight champagne closure. Twist your cork clockwise or counterclockwise, doesn't matter and just edge it out slowly. It should be a slow sound. Don't pull it out. Don't pop it. You're going to agitate the bubbles there, and that's not good. That's it. That's how you should be opening a bottle. Now the recipe calls for three ounces, so we're going to do six ounces of Prosecco right here on the top, so that'll be four jiggers. Prosecco is a nice, sweet, sparkling wine, so it is going to accentuate that flavor of the lemon and open everything up there. The bubbles give it a nice light summery taste. We want to incorporate that so we're just going to take the back of a bar spoon, move it around three times. This is the part where we want to add a little more ice, fill it up, and we're going to garnish this with uh, fresh orange moons. We're going to drop those in here on the side, make it nice and pretty, and then to top it off we're going to put a sprig of basil in there. So anytime we have fresh herbs in a cocktail, you want to wake them up, you're just going to slap them on the back of your hand like that. It opens up the, the textures, the cells in your herbs, and it's going to let those essential oils out so that you can smell them. When you lift the glass to your mouth, the garnish is going to come close to your nose so you can smell those essential oils. The flavor won't be in the drink, but you'll still get those notes in it. And so that, everyone here, is our sake sangria. In honor of 20 years in our performance in Denver, congratulations, everybody. When you've left home and you traveled far, it's time for a visit to the Common Beat Bar.